Um, I think uh, I'll then just turn it over to Martha Landing. It, it, our, our custom is I don't spend a lot of time giving her bio and that sort of thing. She's great at introducing herself, but just to say that, you know, she's done a terrific thing in Wisconsin and in doing it in many other states. Over to you, Martha. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to pull up my screen here and be sure. Can you, can everybody see my screen? Yes. yes. Oh, fabulous. Okay. So um, I'm Martha Lanning and I was, uh, I want to kind of take a step back and just share with you how I got started in all of this. So I'm actually from business and community development, but Scott Walker was destroying Wisconsin, as you all know. And so I was inspired to run for state Senate back in 2014. And I was told that I just needed to close a two point spread. I did 7% better than the top of the ticket. So you'd think that I'd be Senator Lanning, but I learned the next day that I'd lost by 20%. It was a huge shock. Uh, to me. And I started pulling on my uh, business experience, getting stats and things and learned how important a strong Democratic Party is. Because what happened to me was that I learned that while I was focused on getting those independents or getting the, the people right there in the middle to vote for me, we didn't have a statewide program or even a program in my community that was going to get the Democrats to turn out. And this is a little graph and I apologize that both lines are red. That just happened to me today. The top line is Democratic turnout. And these two peaks here are when Barack Obama ran in our state and won by such huge margins. But the lower points here are what was happening in our midterm elections that we kept losing in our midterm elections. And it was because Democrats just weren't turning out. We had this huge volatility. So what I did is I traveled around the state of Wisconsin after my run and was talking to a lot of people about what is going on in our state. We were gonna hire or elect a new state chair and what do we need the state party to do? And in the process of doing that, I was asked to run for chair, I did. And I'm really consolidating a lot of work into a short little presentation here. But what we learned was that we Democrats needed to learn how to do a lot more work for a lot less money. And I was looking at President Obama's model in Wisconsin and saying, how did he turn out, if I went back here, how did he get so many more voters to turn out? What was his race? Why was it different from Kerry and Gore, who had won by five and 11,000 votes, while he won by 400,000 and 200,000 votes? And later, Hillary Clinton lost by 27,000 votes. So the big difference was the field program. And so we knew that we needed to activate our volunteers, the greatest resource we had. We also identified that we wanted to be a resource for candidates. So the candidates weren't hiring consultants, often from out of state, that really don't know our state and making bad decisions for them. And finally, a lot what James just talked about is why do we just shut everything down and recreate the wheel every cycle? We needed to change how the Democratic Party worked. So I will tell you that there was some resistance and James had referred to this. I had raised a lot of money to run for state Senate. I didn't have troubles raising money. I went to some of those same people to ask them to help me build a stronger state party. And a lot of them looked at me and said, well, Martha, why doesn't the state party already do this? Like, this is crazy. And a big part of it was a lack of resources. When I came in, we only had six staff members for the entire state on and one comms person, you know, an executive director, one political person. Here we are supposed to do all of this work. We had nobody, not a single person that worked with activists or organizing because there weren't resources. Um, the DNC gives you right now, they give $150,000 a year guaranteed to a state party, but anything beyond that you have to raise. I also heard from investors though, that the party's like a big black hole. Like I give you money and I never find out what happens. And that's something we as state parties needed to change. And I did, I ended up having a briefing that occurred regularly with our donors so that donors would hear how we were doing and they were part of our team. And then finally I heard, it's not the, to the top of the tickets job was an issue. People were telling me that's the top of the tickets job, the presidential or the gubernatorial, the US Senate candidate. We simply can't sit around and wait for the candidate to be identified and then wait for them to build this program. It wasn't working in Wisconsin. So what we did is we did a lot of things, but this is the, the most important one is 
we went back and launched Obama's neighbor to neighbor program. So we wanted to build teams all over the state of Wisconsin that were trained to independently organize about whatever issue they wanted. We had some that were organizing picketing Paul Ryan's office. We had some that were pick, that were organizing about water quality or sand fracking or building a new school. Whatever they wanted to organize, we took our staff, our organizing team, we had hired five regionals, we had a constituency outreach and a youth director, and then a state organizing director that supervised all of them. We worked with them to just build teams and to have the staff teach people how to target, how to organize, how you're going to do follow-up calls to be sure people show up for your activities. It was a huge success. We, we built 99 teams. The first graph on the left is 99 teams in 2017. But by the election in 2018, we had over 200 active teams around the state. And you can see they're all over the state, um, which was really encouraging to us because a lot of times people don't spend any time in those rural areas. The results were phenomenal. With half of the money that we spent in 2016 on Hillary Clinton's field program, we did 80% more doors than we had done in 16. So it was a huge hit. But it isn't just important that you do doors, because if people don't turn out to vote, what, what difference did it make? We went in and looked at our universe of 752,000 voters, and we found that 75% of them had voted. And that's 2.5% higher than our statewide average for voting. And considering that we were targeting voters that were less likely to show up, that were infrequent voters in midterms, it was a huge win for us. I have some other stats on here, but one of my favorite ones is because we were using this organizing team model and we weren't hiring staff, we could have them all over the state and in areas where we, weren't, we didn't have a lot of activity happening. The 19 reddest counties in all of Wisconsin gave Governor Evers his win margin. They increased Democratic votes by enough to give him his win margin. Now, all but one of those were counties we would have never put staff in. And had we not built these organizing teams and supplied them with this valuable information, we wouldn't have won. And so um, it was just a huge hit. When I left being state party chair, you know, I, had, I handed off to Ben Wickler, who's done a phenomenal job, but I wanted to go out and start taking our program and be sure that other states could have it. And so we launched the state party advancement network in December of 2019, just after I had left. And we allowed, we just asked the state parties if they um, had a proposal about something that they wanted to do. We worked with nine states last year. They have to commit to best practices. They have to commit that they're gonna give us metrics on what they're trying to accomplish, that they're gonna monitor it, that they're gonna get back to us on how they're doing, and that they're going to um, be very honest about the information and the, that they're supplying us. We um, would review their proposals and then we'd recommend to donors. We ended up raising $5.5 million for the nine states. And I have all kinds of stories about the things that we did that and how it made a big impact in Georgia and Arizona and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan. It was just really valuable. So we're doing that again this year. And with your team, um, we're excited to be helping because when you're raising that $350,000, I'm going to be raising with other donors a matching goal. Now, uh, Jason Henry in Pennsylvania, you are lucky enough to be working with one of the great um, directors we have. Oftentimes, executive directors don't stick around. The average is 18 months. So the fact that Jason was the interim director um, in 2020 and has the whole experience of the 2020 election and was the political director before that, so has even more experience with the state party and is carrying it into this year is a huge win for us. On top of that, I've really enjoyed working with Jason because he identifies what a problem would be that, hey, we're going to have candidates taking our regional directors away because they need help for things and we're not going to be focused. So we should start a whole different group of organizers and rods that would be totally focused to grassroots organizing. I love that. He's honest about what's going on and I know he's the right guy for Pennsylvania. So I'm going to introduce him now and stop sharing here. Um, so that Jason can share you a little bit about himself and uh, the program that he hopes to run.